Hello and welcome to our first session on the Old Man in the Sea. This is Unit 10 in American Lit for our second semester. As most of you have seen, this week we will not be meeting live and today's recording will be supplemental in place of our live session. For those of you that have not yet read the announcement about The Old Man in the Sea and downloading the online text and or reading it online, please make sure you check that announcement before continuing with this presentation. Um, as most of you have noticed, you've read one or two lessons dealing with The Old Man in the Sea, and maybe you've even dug a little bit into the novel overall, which is fabulous. Um, however, as I always state to you guys, it's always important to know a little bit of background about our author before we jump into any short story, poem, or in this case, um, novella. And so, as you've most likely read in the online lessons, Ernest Hemingway was born in Oak Park, Illinois in 1898. Um, he began working as a journalist soon after high school, so those of you that are interested in that um, can kind of see his interest in writing overall began not just after high school, but even in high school. Um, he began working for the Kansas City Star and later became an ambulance driver in France during World War I. One thing that makes Ernest Hemingway unique as an author is he's had a variety of life experiences that he brings to his short stories and to his novels. Um, one of those experiences that we've seen in several of his different novels comes from the time he did spend um, in the war in World War I. Um, he was wounded before his 19th birthday and actually went to Italy to serve on the front prior to that. Um, after coming home from Italy, um, he began to write, write both a collection of stories and later on um, novels and masterpieces. His first novel, which again stemmed from this collection of stories, was published in 1925. Um, one of his most well-known novels, A Farewell to Arms, was published in 1929 um, and is considered again one of his masterpieces. And then The Old Man in the Sea, which is the novel that we're going to be reading in this class, was actually published in 1954 and that was the novel that he was awarded the Nobel Prize for which is the most prestigious prize in writing. So we're going to be reading one of his masterpieces, um, something that the critics believe truly will stand the test of time and contains very important themes and messages which I think you guys will see if you continue to read the novel. Um, Hemingway kind of had an interesting personal life. As with many authors, um, in some ways it was a very tortured life. Um, he seemed to struggle through and not be able to achieve all of the things he necessarily wanted to personally. Um, he had four failed marriages. Um, through the guilt of these failed marriages and other things that he failed to achieve in his life, um, he really began a constant battle with alcohol and became a full-blown alcoholic later on in his life, which really dampened, um, obviously, his writing abilities in some way, but his overall happiness in life. And this downward slide and this lack of happiness um, ultimately led to a tragic end in suicide, actually in Ketchum, Idaho. Um, this is one of, unfortunately, the saddest events that our state is known for, um, is his suicide. After his suicide, many of his novels, um, again, kind of renewed in their interest in, in people's interest in them and began to be widely read and also read in schools, which is why one reason why we're reading The Old Man in the Sea now. The Old Man in the Sea was actually a short story 
that Hemingway wrote first, and that was published in 1936, um, called On Blue Water. And he decided to expand that into a full novel. Um, and he really based this novel on an account a friend gave him of an actual incident with an old fisherman who battled a marlin for three days and nights. So although this novel is fiction, it's based on a true story, which many authors, including Hemingway, gather their material from stories that they either experience or hear from us. Throughout this presentation, I'm going to show you guys a variety of images that have been um, either drawn or sketched based on The Old Man in the Sea. So not only has this novel impacted those that read it um, as far as writers and students and teachers alike, but also artists. Many people that have read this novel find the visuals um, that Hemingway paints with his words are so powerful that they've turned them into art. And part of your creative project in this class, which we will be going over as well, um, is being able to incorporate some of the visuals. How do you see what Hemingway is describing in this book? How do you envision Santiago, our main character here, our main fisherman? How do you see the blue sea? How do you envision the boat and the marlin? So I'm going to be showing you some visual representations of what people over the years have pictured in their minds as they've read. And I encourage you as you continue to read to really try and create those pictures in your mind. The Old Man in the Sea, a um, couple main themes I want you guys to keep in mind as you read. We will continue to discuss the main themes and the symbols of this novel um, as we work through it. And again, your final project, your creative 10.01 project, will require you to really focus in on the symbols in the story as well as the themes. And the main theme that Hemingway really wanted to get across here is this concept of endurance and struggle. So what does it look like in our life to endure, to have determination and pride in what we do, and to struggle whether we win that battle or not? Um, and this main theme, it really comes from Hemingway's personal motto, what he lived by in his life, and that is, in life, one must, first of all, endure. You must endure and you must struggle through that. Um, and we see that in Santiago, our main character here, that despite tremendous odds against him, he still remains optimistic. Um, he still hopes to ultimately win the battle against the Marlin, to fend off the sharks and the opposition that arises um, to defeat him. And so, again, our main theme being that endurance, that struggle, that determination of our main character, Santiago. Um, there are several other themes that are explored in here. In your reading guide that you will find in Unit 10, there are places to explore even more themes than are mentioned in this PowerPoint, and I encourage you to do that as well. A couple other of the main ones I would highlight are faith, loyalty, and even a unity with nature. Again, we see the influence going back to our um, romanticism unit and our transcendentalism and this idea of connection with nature. We see that coming back into Hemingway's writing in The Old Man in the Sea. So again, our main character, Santiago, exhibits faith in himself in a variety of ways, especially by not giving up in the face of trials. Um, we see a loyalty and a really unique relationship between Manolin the young boy, and Santiago, or old fisherman. I want you guys to make sure you pay special attention to that relationship. You're going to see that relationship highlighted in the reading guide and places for you to take notes on that. I highly suggest that you do that as well. It's essential to understanding the novel. And then lastly, Santiago also addresses, you know, this issue of brotherhood and the connection shared by all of nature's creatures. Um, so there is a connection between him and the marlin. Even though he's battling it, um, he also respects the fish in the way and respects the struggle. So look for those connections between Santiago and nature, both the sea and the fish and the sharks um, that surround him. Again, another visual representation of that, considering one of the main themes is struggle and overcoming that. And so again, we have Santiago here. Um, they envision the boat being very small and the marlin being big, that 
obstacle to overcome. Um, again, sometimes being bigger than us and consuming us. So how do you envision the times that he describes these? The setting and point of view of this novel, as most of you have probably already noticed if you've dug into it, is mainly the sea. You're mainly going to be out at out on the ocean. If you've been to the ocean, take a minute to visualize that. If you haven't, look at some pictures as you're reading that. What what would it be like to be in a small, tiny boat out in the middle of nowhere? Okay. So mostly the sea, except at the very beginning of the novel. And at the very end, it is set in a little Cuban village near Havana. So again, definitely different from where we live. You'll continue to explore more of that culture through the online lessons. So make sure you're carefully reading those. And then our author Hemingway here has decided to use third person omniscient point of view. And that's important to note. That means that he knows everything that's going on. He can get into the minds of all of the characters. Um, and again, third person is that outside view. So again, not a personal character um, within the story, but an outside observer that is telling the story. And that affects the reliability of the story as well. In addition to um, our setting in point of we also have symbolism. This is where I want you to especially tune in. So if you've kind of tuned out at part of this presentation, tune back in now. This symbolism is going to be so important for you to track and to understand in this novel, not only to understand the overall meaning of it, but also to complete your major assignment for Unit 10, which is the 10.01 Creative Project. Um, the whole project centers around symbolism and the symbolism in the novel. There are several symbols in the novel and each symbol can have multiple meanings as you guys know. Um, some of the main ones are the fish including the marlin obviously and the sharks that come along as he's trying to reel in this giant marlin. And Again, there's multiple symbols to these. Um, one of them can be seen that the marlin can kind of represent a side of nature that is more benevolent, meaning, um, you know, peaceful and um, maybe something that's necessary, whereas the sharks are more malevolent, um, meaning more evil and that there's a fate on that side too. Again, there are multiple meanings to the symbols of the marlin and the shark. This is only one. I want you guys to continue to think about those multiple meanings and symbols as you read through the novel and the online lessons. Another very important symbol for you guys to take notes on and tune into as you read and complete the novel is the symbol of the dreams of the lion. What do these necessarily represent in general? What do they represent for Santiago? Um, he has several dreams of the lion um, and at different stages of his struggle. So make sure you tune into those dreams and take notes on them as well. And then finally, we have this symbol of Joe DiMaggio. Seems random. Um, all of a sudden, we have a baseball player thrown in here. But it's actually Santiago's hero. So look at why do you think Joe DiMaggio would be the symbol of Santiago's hero? And how are Joe DiMaggio and Santiago alike? Okay, How does Santiago really gain and take strength from his thoughts of his hero? And what does Joe DiMaggio symbolize overall in the novel? So these are three very important symbols for you to, I would say, write down on a piece of paper in a Word document. And as you read, write down your ideas and thoughts of them, as well as how you envision them. How do you envision the dream going? How do you envision Joe DiMaggio to look like? Um, what do you think of or see Lord Marlin? Again, here's one visual representation of what somebody saw when they read um, about the dream of the lions and including, again, the sea, obviously, into this and the cliff and the family of lions. So again, make sure you're using your imagination as you read this novel as well. couple things in wrapping up. As you continue to read the novel, 
I want you to think about these things. I want you to stay focused on the theme. And think about this question. What aspects of the novel reinforce the theme of endurance and struggle, loyalty and faith? Okay. Um, in this endurance and struggle, also that word determination. And you'll see pride thrown in there as well. So what aspects of the novel, what things happen in the novel? What conversations happen between Santiago and Manolin? What events happen that reinforce these themes? Same thing with the symbolism. What are some of the main symbols found in the novel? And we talked about a couple. The Lion Dream, the Marlin, Joe Namaj. Joe DiMaggio, but what are some other possible symbols as well? And then with these symbols, what are some of their possible meanings? Okay, what meanings do they hold? There can maybe be more than one. Um, look for dialogue and um, action that support your points here. What makes you interpret this symbol that way? Think about that as well. And then finally, I want you to think about characterization and character overall. You're going to be focusing in the 10.01 assignment on the character of Santiago. And you're going to be required to use your skills and your understanding of symbolism um, to select images that you think represent Santiago as a character. I will be going over that assignment in detail and also providing a recording on it. But as you read, I want you to keep notes of that. What are some of his characteristics? What make him unique and memorable as a character? Is he sensitive? Is he strong? Um, is he full of pride? And is that a positive or a negative thing? So again, you're going to see a lot of tips as to his character in the online lessons as well. So make sure you are carefully reading those in addition to reading the novel. And finally, I wanted to make sure you guys are aware of some additional resources that are going to help you as you continue to read through the novel and complete the online lessons. Um, one is the reading guide. It is detailed. It helps direct you to the important things in each one of the sections you're required to read. Highly recommend you download the reading guide. It can be found in Doc Sharing, and I'm also going to link it to the weekly work schedule. Okay, you do not have to submit this reading guide, but I highly suggest that you use it. Some other online resources that I've provided and found for you, the online textbook. This again is posted in the announcement that I mentioned in our very first slide. So if you don't have a copy of the book, I found one for you. Also, if you prefer to listen as you read or listen to the story, I found a full audio version. It does have to stream off of YouTube, but it is a full read audio version if that's something you would like. And then I'm also going to be providing a couple film versions of the book once you're done. And again, that's to help you visualize the story um, as well. And then finally, I'll be providing some discussion questions, a PowerPoint with some discussion questions and answers to help you dig into some of the details of the novel um, as you work through it. So please be on the lookout for these resources and use them as you continue to read the novel. So lastly, I wanted to leave you guys with a final image and picture of our character Santiago. So as you continue to read The Old Man in the Sea, or maybe dig into it for the first time, like I said, pause and think through some of these main things. The idea of theme, the idea of symbolism, the idea of character, and how do you envision this story? Let it play like a movie in your mind. Um, allow yourself to connect with these characters. And again, take those notes as you work your way through. If you have any questions at all about the presentation or as you work through um, the unit or assignments, please send me a K-mail or email. Also, please note any dates that I may be out of the office um, in your communications. I look forward to continuing to work on this unit with you, and I hope you guys have, have a fantastic week.